Hi, um, so yeah, it's great to be here. So I'm just gonna get started and um, welcome Martin and Robin onto stage and we'll jump right into it. So today we're going to basically discuss kind of how we can retrace and, and go about taking new initiatives and new innovations in the path towards net zero, which is obviously at the forefront of all of our minds in society and business alike across Europe at the moment. Um, and so it's really great to be joined by two people who are representing industries who are quite traditionally seen to be big pollutants, um, the airline and the agricultural industry. So thank you for obviously joining me here today. Um, it's great. Um, so first of all, maybe you can just introduce yourselves. Martin, do you want to begin? Yeah, I'm Martin Gauss, the CEO of Air Baltic, and uh, yeah, running the national airline here, the largest airline in the Baltics, with the youngest fleet in Europe and the greenest aircraft you can fly at the moment. Great, thank you. And uh, Robin? <laughs> yeah, my name is Robin. Uh, coming from the farming family, and uh, with Iarna, we help farmers to being, build long-term partnership with nature. Uh, we see farming as uh, production industry, but it different thing is that in, instead of factory, there is nature around the farm. So what we help to do is for farmers to improve their factory so that they can uh, farm more efficiently in the future. Great. So obviously, um, Robin, you are representing your, your company e Agronom, which is an agritech. Um, so can I just ask quickly, what kind of inspired your startup and what inspired this sustainable approach to a very traditional industry? Yeah, like I said, I'm coming from the organic uh, from, from the farming family, and uh, my father has 1,400 hectare organic grain farm in South Estonia, and he has a saying that in the farm, our main customer is soil. So uh, we really want to take care of the soil, and um, uh, e got started because my father needed a tool to manage the farm. And uh, I ended up building something for him. Other farmers needed this as well. Uh, but the interesting thing is that Already in the first prototype, we had humus balance calculator included. So humus is the richest part of the soil. And uh, that wasn't important for farmers at the time, but it was important for us. And then later, we pivoted several times uh, business model and scaling model. And now we are really focusing on uh, bringing those economic climate benefits to farmers so they could get more money uh, if they sequester carbon mm -hmm. in the soil and they could get better terms from the banks and etc. Sure, I think it's an interesting concept that you're drawing on. So um, the farming industry has been kind of getting a bad reputation in a lot, a lot of ways. The airline industry as well, which we'll, we'll jump into um, for being a big pollutant. There's massive societal changes at the moment, people moving to plant-based diets because they believe it's better for the environment, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so how are you kind of reducing the pressure and the burden on farmers to help this industry go net zero? Yeah, well, the problem in farming is quite simple. Uh, farmers want to change their practices to more sustainable, but it has to be short-term profitable uh, for farmers to happen because they have the next loan payments to pay. And uh, the good thing is that there are companies who can help it short-term profitable. Uh, some companies are ready to pay money for farmers to sequester carbon in the soil. Uh, banks are super happy to give better loan terms to uh, farmers uh, who are managing sustainably, as they give better terms to uh, electric car buyers. Landlords are happy to give better rental terms to farmers who manage land sustainably, uh, their asset. And food companies are ready to pay more for food that is grown with low emissions. Now the problem is that all of those stakeholders, even though they have a good wish in mind, they lack the ability to uh, calculate uh, what are the missions in the farm and detect which farmer is sustainable and which farmer isn't. So this is where we jump in and we build the infrastructure and partner with those companies so that uh, they can bring those, uh, those climate benefits uh, to farmers and make it short-term profitable for farmers to uh, manage sustainably. Interesting, great, okay. And then uh, Martin, passing over to you. Um, coming from the airline industry, what kind of inspired the shift to sustainability for Air Baltic? We had to take a decision in 2012 to renew the fleet in the future. And uh, at that time, uh, it was obvious that you wanna go into the future with something which is available 
uh, at that time you, you can have it, uh, which is more sustainable. And, and that's something which we haven't finished now. It continues until the airline industry is net zero, and that's in 2050. We then took a decision to invest uh, into an aircraft in 2012, which arrived in 2016, because the technology was not yet built. And since that time, we fly that new technology, which is mainly the engine, which consumes 30% less fuel and with less 30% less emissions. We now have the, the youngest fleet in, in Europe. Uh, we have the most efficient aircraft per passenger you can buy today. And with that, of course, we deliver, if we look at last year, we just published our sustainability report, we, we have burned 30% less fuel. If, if we took in numbers, then that was 100,000 kilograms of CO2 less than we would have burned if we wouldn't have invested in this. You could still argue the, the amount of uh, CO2 emissions airlines produce should eliminate, and, and that's actually why we did it at the beginning and what we want to do, but it is, a, is an approach where we need to use all technology available at the time. We cannot jump to the end already because there's the technology is not available yet, but it will be, and as we have today the most modern equipment, we have the chance to invest in the future in the next technology step, which is there, but today you cannot buy anything which is more efficient. Okay, so would you say that small incremental changes um, is more beneficial in the long term rather than making big leaps? If you could make big leaps, we would do it. If there would be a hydrogen aircraft available, or if we could take more sustainable aviation fuel onto our aircraft. Today in Riga, for example, you can't buy sustainable aviation fuel, biofuel. It's not available. We have to take it from Oslo, from Helsinki. Once it's available here, we will buy it. If we have a hydrogen aircraft available, which is 2035, we will buy it. And with that, we go to net zero. But the small steps we are taking now will lead to the new technology. But as Air Baltic is, is, is innovation leading in the world, we're leading with it, innovation, innovation. Uh, we are doing good progress and uh, coming from Latvia, a very green country, it helps. So that, that green logo we, we put on, some people criticize and say, how, how can an airline be green? But you can just compare yourself to all other airlines and then it's a very green one. Mm. Yeah? Not saying that we are having a lot of uh, emissions uh, uh, as, as, an, as an airline, as an aircraft produces them still. Sure. And so, do you think that the airline industry gets an unfair reputation for its pollutant? Like, it, or is it...? I mean, the numbers uh, speak for it being unfair, but we are the ones, if you look up in the sky and you can see it. Yeah. You don't see it in the fashion industry, in the shipping industry. You see it with airlines, and uh, any percentage which we produce as airlines is a percentage too much, I agree. But on the other hand, we need to have that form of transportation because if you do the math and say, how else can I transport people? That is the most efficient way if you look at the production of CO2 per passenger per trip. Yeah, so the airplane is today the most efficient way. Um, on a short distance, not, but on as, as, as soon as we go more than one hour than it is. And it gets better and better as we go longer. So it's a bit unfair because uh, we at the same time have the advertising of our industry buy a ticket for five euros, less than a cappuccino, fly 2,000 kilometers. And then you get, uh, you get asked why you don't have USB chargers on board because the iPhone needs mm -hmm. to be charged so that um, you, you can go all the way, right? Sure. There's uh, criticism about us, but, but then on the other hand, uh, people are not willing to invest themselves for it, what it would cost to have all airlines having that, uh, because airlines need money to invest into that technology. Uh, we, we have done that. Other airlines can follow in the future, but they need to invest. One, one of our aircraft costs $90 million. Yeah? So you need to have that to invest it um, is, as an airline. If you don't have the money, you will fly all the aircraft and they burn more fuel. Sure. Um, and so in the approach to net zero from the Air Baltic, perspective, is it just about the planes? Is it just about changing the fleet and the, the fuel consumption? Or is there other business practices you're implementing? No, again, we, we, uh, we have many, many fields where we can uh, improve our footprint. We have changed our ground operations and technical cars to full electric fleet. Um, so all of our cars are full electric cars. We, of course, want them to be charged with uh, renewable energy, where we are not yet there 100%. We have reduced last year, I think, the, the, the use of wasted paper uh, by 70%. Uh, 
Um, sustainability is not only CO2, we also have, for example, Air Baltic is leading in the world about female and male. We have a 50-50 split in the company. We take all the measures, but then going back at the core of the airline, unfortunately, the CO2 amount you produce as an airline is so large that the focus is also there the most. Interesting. Okay, and so, Robin, back to you, I pose a similar question. In the farming and the agricultural industry, do you think it's about these small incremental changes or we need bigger, faster impact? And how do you support farmers to go about that? Yeah, well, first of all, I'm super happy to hear about those uh, emission reduction side. Uh, there is a lot of talk about, um, about carbon offsetting, but mm -hmm. uh, by 2030, for example, we have to reduce global emissions by 23 billion tons. By the way, really easy to remember, 23, Michael Jordan shirt number. When I understood this, I, I, I never forget it anymore. <laughs> 23 billion tons. And 90% of this should come from emission reduction. So things like Air Baltic is doing and, and other companies applying those new technologies. Now in farming, uh, the same is true. We have to both uh, reduce emissions. Uh, the biggest potential is on the animal side. So for example, collecting a methane together and uh, turning this into biogas. Uh, but then on the ground side, uh, big potential is, uh, uh, is sequestration. So sequestration in the soil and then uh, with agroforestry sequestering, implementing trees and sequestering more in the above ground biomass. The good thing is that these practices are already today short term profitable if farmers uh, apply for carbon credit program uh, provided by e -Acronym. We are launching together with few banks in uh, Scandinavian banks, but in Baltics at first, green loan program, where those farmers will start getting uh, better terms. And that actually interesting thing over there is that um, we have a belief that uh, financial industry will have the biggest impact in farming. So uh, most likely after 2030, farmers who don't have a clear path to our net zero, they even won't get the loan uh, mm -hmm. from, the, from the bank because the climate risks for the banks uh, become too high. From the customer side, uh, they see that those farmers, they will have new regulations and they have to lower their emissions and increase sequestration. But also for the bank, the cost of capital will be depending on, uh, on their loan portfolio emissions. So, uh, yeah, it's difficult to say if, well, we can always do more and we c farmers can do bigger leaps, but it's already possible to have net zero food production, even animal production, uh, with, uh, with this uh, carbon sequestration side combined with emission reduction. Interesting. Um, and so then my question to both of you as well is looking at the, the next generation, this new generation of customers in terms of buying um, products and also travelers, how do you balance the needs of customers who want to probably pay less, but also help the environment at the same time? How do you balance those needs? Okay. Well, uh, in our case, we, we see there is a big work done by regulation, uh, reg regulators uh, who make it impossible to, uh, well, for example, y y in Estonia, you could uh, produce uh, electricity uh, cheaper if you burn some coal. But, uh, but uh, because of emission taxes, it's not profitable. So regulators are doing their job already, and uh, that's, that's one thing that's driving. But then from the consumer side as well, uh, consumers uh, are ready to pay, uh, some consumers okay. are ready to pay more, even though this is tricky. Many consu consumers say that they would prefer uh, sustainable things, but, they but they're not, prepared yeah, to not pay ready to uh, pay extra. In food production, actually, the extra is, is not that big. So the price difference would be around 1% uh, the, because most of the emissions come on the production side, but the uh, food price is mainly depending uh, in the shops, like uh, the, the, the stores and then the processors take bigger part, and their, but their emissions are smaller. So, uh, and, and, but the third thing is that um, many companies are actually not changing because of legislators or because of uh, consumers, but because of their own employees. And we see this happening very much in the IT industry, where uh, uh, the competition uh, to talent is so high, and it's not enough anymore just to pay higher salaries, but people really choose companies based on their values. Sure, interesting. And for you, how do you balance the needs of, of 
air travelers who would rather pay cheaper for tickets and, and the needs to go net zero. So we have a, da a daily feedback from our customers. Last week we had 65,000 bookings, so that's normal for one week. So 65,000 customers bought a ticket last week online. And uh, they would have the chance to, to click on a box and say, I want to pay more, let's say for a domestic European ticket, 32 euros more, to offset my CO2 mm -hmm. footprint. But they're not doing it. Very, very, very rarely, and that's not only for Air Baltic, that's in general, that's in Germany everywhere, passengers do not yet want to do that. But they want to book a ticket. And if we talk about the price, then the competition uh, are offering and advertising three euros, five euros. If we would now say we're not doing it because it doesn't make sense, and I personally believe it doesn't make sense, to transport somebody over 2,000 kilometers and charge five euros, we also offer 1990, yeah, that's our cheapest price in Air Baltic. Mm. Um, that's, that's not making sense at all. But our customers demand that because if I don't offer these tickets to the customers, they will go to somebody else and I'm going to have empty airplanes. So as long as that is not changing, the only way to reduce to net zero, and that's actually what's happening for years, us investing, but the passengers want to be traveling and they are not wanting to pay more for it. So the only way for us, for the foreseeable future, and that is through all generations, is we invest, we change, and the passenger get one day transported without emissions. But the passengers today are not willing, and then I say there's exceptions, but they are not willing to pay extra to have a more sustainable travel, because otherwise we would have 100% of all passengers, because we are the most sustainable carrier in Europe. Now, if we look at uh, the, the equipment we fly, but we don't get that benefit. It's the opposite. If there's a five euro ticket, we could do a poll here in the, in the room. Who would pay five and who would pay 79 if you fly in parallel to Rome? Mm. Yeah, you would all pay five euros. That's the reality, and we shouldn't dream about it. But we will not stop changing, and I'm very proud running an airline from Latvia, which is leading in this field in Europe. Interesting. It's interesting to see how we have maybe one industry where people are a bit more receptive and ready for the change, and one industry not so much. Um, so then as a, a final question, um, again, to both of you. How do you see your respective industries catching up to the EU's net zero goals? Are we still on track? Is this something that's attainable, or how do you see it? Well, in, in farming, uh, well, there, there is, uh, it, it seems that we are on track. And as I said as well, the biggest influence probably is coming from the financial side as well. Banks are really reshaping mm -hmm. their loan portfolios, are already thinking forward because uh, the cost of money for them will be dependent on how clean their, uh, their loan portfolios will be. And, uh, and, and it will be very difficult for farmers to do any changes. So right now what we are seeing is two things happening. Proof of concept in different regions, one, so the, the basically that where other farmers can learn from, and secondly, uh, economic benefits kicking in the carbon bonus, better uh, rental terms, better uh, financing terms, and higher prices for the production. Interesting. And uh, the airline industry has co globally committed to net zero by 2050. That includes all airlines around the globe. We in Europe go a bit faster because we have uh, more restrictions on us. We have a, an, an emission trading system already implemented. So we will go faster, and we go faster as technology advances. If you ask, are we are making it? Yes, and probably we will make it much earlier. In the case of Air Baltic, we're going to renew the current technology in the next 15 years to then the latest technology, and with that taking a big step. But there's also things like the, the common European sky, which would save immediately 10% of the emissions of the industry. But that would mean the different countries would have to agree that you can fly in a straight line instead of zigzag. <laughs> Sustainable aviation fuel, as I said, there will be more coming, and uh, uh, hydrogen and electric aircraft will be coming. So by 2050, that will not be a discussion whether that industry is net zero. We will be net zero. On the way, we will have a lot of discussions because our industry now, after the crisis, is growing, and globally we will see much more passengers, if we want it or not, traveling. Yeah? So the young generation, especially from Asia, they will be storming the aircraft and discover the world, which is good, but that's going to lead to more emissions on the way, and you cannot stop the globe traveling, so it will happen. So that's more the challenge, but to go to net zero by 2050 will be ahead of that target.
Amazing, it's good to hear. So thank you, and um, I think that ends up our, our discussion. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.